Have you ever heard the expression, can't see the forest or the trees? It describes when people get so focused on one problem that they miss the bigger picture. This happens easily in improvement work because to solve big problems, see the forest, teams must dive into the processes that create them, the trees. Edwards Deming pointed out that when we do this, sometimes local improvements we make don't improve the system as a whole. This phenomenon is known as sub-optimization. To make sure improvement teams can problem solve effectively and see the forest for the trees, they must shift their perspective periodically from the tree view to the forest view. In the forest view, your team can see all of the conditions necessary to be successful. We refer to these conditions for success as key drivers. I want to emphasize my use of the word conditions, not changes. Changes are all the ideas your team can't wait to test. Key drivers are the conditions that those changes must satisfy to be worthy of implementation. So the better your key drivers are, the more likely your team is to come up with change ideas that will be successful. Let's use an example. Suppose an inpatient team is working on a discharge delay problem on Hospital Unit 3 West. Their SMART goal is to increase the percentage of patients discharged from 3 West within two hours of the discharge order from a baseline of 20% to a target of 50% by year's end. After making workflow changes for the team rounding process, they successfully achieved their SMART goal. What they realized later though, was while their performance was improving, the performance on their neighboring unit 3 East plummeted. This was because the new process diverted resources away from 3 East. 3 West didn't really solve their problem. They moved it somewhere else. So it is possible to succeed in reaching your goal, but to fail at solving a problem. This is why developing key drivers is an important step. The key driver development process can be broken into two phases, drafting and refining. To begin the drafting process, assemble your improvement team and take a look at your problem analysis. The problem causes you identified create the conditions which allow your problem to exist. Therefore, their opposite should create the conditions for improvement. For example, let's say one of your causes is a communication failure which results in the team being unaware when specific actions need to be taken. A key driver could be the inverse, which is teams must be aware when specific actions need to be taken. Note that you're not describing how they will be made aware, just that they need to be. Start with your highest priority causes and work your way down the list, inverting each one. If you get stuck, don't sweat it, move on to the next one. Think of this as the first draft of an essay. Just get something on the page. Another key driver development exercise is future state mapping. In the home improvement TV hit Fixer Upper, this is a key step in the process. Before any improvements are made to a home, Joanna Gaines reviews a computer-generated image of the home's ideal future state. This exercise can be helpful in improvement projects too. Fortunately, you don't need expensive software to make this happen. Get the team together and use sticky notes, whiteboards, or, or whatever you have at your disposal to make the ideal future visual. As your shared understanding of the ideal future comes into focus, take note of the conditions that make it so perfect. Remember not to focus on the trees, like the fully automated electronic medical record you imagined, but on the forest, the conditions that make the future state so ideal, a user-friendly clinical documentation experience. As these ideal conditions become clear, write them down. They may be good key drivers. These exercises should get you started, but how do we make sure what happened to 3 East doesn't happen in your improvement project? The next phase, refining key drivers, should help with that. To begin, assemble your team and read your list of key drivers and discuss each of the following questions. How could these key drivers be more patient-centered? How acceptable will these key drivers be to the team, to our leadership? How effectively do these key drivers address our problem analysis? How might these key drivers affect those downstream of us? What about upstream? Take your time and try not to rush. Capture everyone's thoughts for each question before deciding on what changes might need to be made. You may even discover a key driver that you missed initially. Once you've answered these questions to your team's satisfaction, you're ready for the next refining exercise, which will help you ensure the language of your key drivers is effective. This last refining exercise is designed to help the team find the right balance between generality and specificity. Striking this balance will not only help your team, 
It will help future teams take advantage of what you've discovered in your project. In improvement work, specific process changes often don't translate well from one environment to the next. The key drivers, however, more likely will. The better you balance generality and specificity, the more helpful your key drivers will be in guiding your team and others to develop effective process changes. This is a diagram provided by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics for the self-management of type 2 diabetes. As you can see, the guidance is first organized into three categories on the top row. Nutrition, education, and emotional health. If the bold words were key drivers, they would basically be saying, to manage your type 2 diabetes, make sure you have good nutrition, are educated, and take care of your emotional health. They would be so general that they wouldn't be very helpful to somebody with diabetes. Don't let this happen to your project. Additional specificity is added beneath each bold header. Let's take a look at nutrition. Registered Dietitian for Medical Nutrition Therapy, which I'll interpret as, to have good nutrition as a type 2 diabetic, I must consult with a registered dietitian. This may be true, but it's a bit too specific to be a key driver. Remember, key drivers describe conditions, not how you create the conditions. The condition it might be describing is, patient's nutrition must follow the American Diabetes Association guidelines for type 2 diabetics. Again, seeing a registered dietitian is still a good idea as a means of ensuring the patient's nutrition follows the guidelines for type 2 diabetics. Rather than making it a key driver, consider it as a possible process change. Now let's apply this to your project. As a team, look at your key drivers one by one and ask the question, what condition is this key driver describing that is helpful? If you have a difficult time answering the question, then your driver may be too general. Adding a bit more specificity will help your team narrow their focus and set them up to develop more targeted process changes. Next, check to see if your drivers are overly specific. For each one, ask the question, what are the ways we could accomplish this? If your team can only think of one way, then it's likely too specific. Trace the idea back to its key driver by asking the question, what condition will this change create? The answer to this question should help you articulate the key driver. If you skip the development of the key driver process and you go straight to the interventions, you can fool yourself into thinking that you did a better job than you actually did. What key drivers forced us to do as a team was to take a step back and take a much broader perspective on our project. One of the interventions that we implemented for our project was having a pain protocol. This was specific for the providers so that we could follow this flow chart to determine if a patient should go home with opioids or not. But if we just implemented that without having a key driver, there is a possibility we run the risk that we could send every patient home without opioids and everybody comes back to us and they're in lots of pain. So without that key driver of having pain appropriately managed for our patients, we would not be able to have a successful project. Now that we've described some exercises to help you with key driver development, I'll offer up a couple caveats. These exercises are not a perfect science. They are just meant to start team discussions that will be helpful to develop key drivers. So treat them accordingly. The team may come up with change ideas before they do key drivers, and that's okay. The key is discerning what you're changing from the desired effect of that change. Once you have solid key drivers, you can rest assured that your team has taken in the perspective of both the forest and the trees. You are now well positioned to start talking about process changes to make your project successful and leave the system as a whole better than you found it. That concludes this video on developing key drivers. Happy testing.